If prosperity were easy, everybody around the world would be prosperous. If freedom were easy, everybody around the world would be free. If security were easy, everybody around the world would be secure. They are not. None of this is going to be easy. But this is the United States of America. It takes an extraordinary effort. It takes extraordinary commitment. It takes extraordinary strength. The Valley Forge wasn't easy. Going to the moon wasn't easy. Settling the West wasn't easy. We are the American people. We have seen difficulties before, and we always overcome them. This is about rolling up our sleeves. We might have some differences, but at Americans putting our head down and getting it done. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. You know I, what? I don't even have them. I don't now. have any either. I threw them out. <laughs> I'm sitting alone in good. my in my mm-hmm. office and I thought it was fitting. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show. My name is Rain Dupree. Welcome to the most dangerous podcast around. This is the podcast. That strikes fear in the hearts of the mainstream media and those organizations that work with the federal government on stopping misinformation. This is us. Yeah. Wayne Dupree. Adopted son from I don't even know where, but uh, yeah. Along with... um, (laughs) But the young Hutch Bailey Jr., the Godfather. That's me. Of the That's me. And the even younger Jason J.R. Robinson. Top of the morning, everybody. Get your We're mask ready. Right. Election season's here. <laughs> We're dangerous. We're dangerous. You know what? Let me throw something up to you because um I'm I'm yeah, we're going to start reading to it. Let me, uh, oh, yeah, we are broadcasting on Red Voice Media, ladies and gentlemen. If you're not um, tuning in to Red Voice Media, check them out, redvoicemedia.com. Also, you can go to their Rumble channel and check them out at uh, Red Voice Media on the Rumble channel. We broadcast there from 12 to 1.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Monday through Thursday. We give you your Friday so you can collect yourself, get yourself back to where you should be, uh, you know, Sucking the air, sucking, sucking something. I don't know, whatever. But uh, my my boys look tired, don't they? My boys look tired. Um, there's a there's a there's a debate going on tonight. All three of us said we aren't watching it. Uh, and I know for the better part of everybody that's on social media, y'all say you aren't gonna watch it. We know most of you are. Um, and, and I mean that's that's just the way it goes. I mean. You are who you aren't. You you say on social media that you aren't going to do something, and then you go behind and we hope that you don't do it. But if you want to do it, do it. Um, you do it. Do it on Rumble. Yeah, I was going to say I I'm going to tune into a little bit on Rumble, and I'm I'll be watching thing. Trump on Tucker. They got the exclusive streaming rights. I don't know how they did that. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Yeah. They, well, they yeah they got um, well they also have a booth there too. Yeah, they got Drew from Red Voice, it looks like, is there. No. He's doing it. um, He's doing it in the studio tonight. Oh, is he? Yeah. Yeah. And everybody's going to be. But Rumble is Rumble has a booth and it and it looks like some of the Trump team is going to be um, in the Rumble booth at, at the Rumble. booth. Yeah. 
Now, from what we heard yesterday, they weren't going to allow them in there at all. And then Matt Gates came later on last night. Let's see. I, I have the clip. I have the clip. Matt Gates um, basically said that they worked it out or whatnot and that they will be uh, there at the at, at the debate answering questions. So we'll see. We'll see how that turns out. Well, that's good. I mean, you know, that especially the, what I understood was that they weren't going to be able to be in the Fox News spin room. So if they're in another room, that's another blast of Fox News. That's good. Well, usually the spin room is everybody all in there together. It's almost like CPAC. You remember that yeah. everybody, you know, so uh, here, actually. The here first Republican that. presidential primary debate is tomorrow night. President Trump has made uh, other plans. And now we're learning Fox News, the Never Trump Network, won't allow Trump surrogates to attend the debate and the spin room after the debate. Now, this move, as you know, is is completely unprecedented. That doesn't sound like the like the RNC or Fox News covets free speech much at all. What's your take on this? So here's what happened. The RNC gave control over the spin room to Fox News. Um, we were allowed to uh, go and observe the debate, but there was a little bit of confusion. I can tell you now that's all been sorted out. Uh, we are going to have the Trump team in full force at this debate. We are going to have access to the spin room. We're going to uh, be there to observe the debate. And I can't wait to be given my hot takes on Newsmax uh, afterwards and uh, share with you uh, my perspective on how it went. President Trump's got such a commanding lead in Iowa right now, Chris. He's got the biggest lead since George W. Bush in 2000 in that state. So he's really running away with it. But it'll be fun to see what uh, what some of the aspiring politicos on the Republican side uh, want to share on the debate stage. Well, you are breaking news right now, Congressman Matt Gates, uh, uh, informing everybody that this prohibition that was being floated out there uh, from Trump surrogates at the debate will not be in place. And that's actually kind of refreshing. Good to know. There you have it. Um, you know, you know, he, he he's kind of funny because um, for a while there, he was pushing uh, DeSantis. He was hoping DeSantis and stuff. Yourself, yeah, yeah, and then you know, so but pretty narrow neck, pretty narrow neck. <laughs> <laughs> Florida, Florida usually has those um crazy looking ones too. You remember, you remember that Democrat, um, the one that looked like Lurch and House Democrat, and he's a big dude, he always what, used to give Repo Republicans of the governor they had that white haired Christ. Chris, yeah, Chris, yeah. He, he looked like a, a failed yeah. Ken doll. Oh, yeah. my gosh. Yeah. And for debate prep for tonight, if you were going to watch it, go back and look at Charlie Chris versus Ron DeSantis debates. And Chris yeah, is I mean, just an okay it debater. Doesn't, it doesn't look like it's going to take a lot to anger him. I mean, if one person comes out and says... uh. You know, Governor, your revisionist history basically started after uh, Donald Trump opened back up the company, so um, the country. So, um, what are you talking about that you were always this and that when you basically opened it up when Donald Trump told you to open it up? Well, I've always been. No, you haven't. No, you haven't. No, you haven't. And um, we'll see where Fox News lands on what type of questions or how they, well, actually, I don't even care. I don't even What's, care. What time does the vice presidential debate start? <laughs> I, I, I don't know, man. The Keebler, Donald Trump started the a vice presidential thing. website. And Fox Shut News banned up. it. And Fox Shut News banned up. it. From, they banned it from their employees. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, you talk about trolling. <laughs> it's a trolling. So he has Nikki, Nikki Haley talking about Every American should feel the pain of George Floyd's death. I mean, it just quotes them from all kind of different places. It, it's, it's brutal. Is it really? Yeah. Yeah, it's savage. And I got to say, okay. and part of why I want to watch the debate is mm -hmm. because I want to see just how awful the Republican Party is without President Trump and MAGA. Like, these people are, are all a bunch of clowns. They're elitists. They want war in Ukraine. They are not serving the best interest of us. And without President Trump, you are, I've said it before, you are looking 
Reagan Mondale only in reverse. Only the Republicans got, are the I, Mondale. I gotta say, I really, really, really want to watch it, man. But I'm not going to. I mean, <laughs> oh, I, want going to. to. I really want to. I. <laughs> I want to do it on Rumble too, just to stick it to Fox. Cause everybody on Rumble instead of Fox, it's like a big, big F you, you know. That's like, a good that's a good thing. I'm glad they did that. Yeah. Like I will go to the trouble of figuring out how to stream Rumble on my television rather than watching Fox News. Oh, that's like, easy. Just get a Roku or if, I don't know. That's I've been doing that for years. Yeah, it's actually they got an app now. They didn't used to have one, or maybe they didn't. I just never downloaded it. But what Rumble? Was, yeah, yeah. I've been watching Rumble for a long time. Yeah, it's. Uh, I, I mean, not lately. I haven't watched any TV lately. But that's my go-to place because they took my YouTube account away. So screw you. I'll figure something else out. You know. Oh my gosh! And isn't the censorship getting wild? And now it is. I'm watching. Mass- I, I'm looking at at Liberty Daily. And as I'm looking at it, doing a show, it goes off the air. Right. It goes off the internet. Gateway Pundit, I couldn't get. It took me about 10 times to, to get the non-air uh, gateway. It, it's uh, it's going to get worse, too. It is. And Fox News is going to be part of it. They got, right. caught li- they got caught lying today. Martha McCallum, uh, you know, had this uh, oh, uh, primary voter, Republican primary voter here. He's a never-Trump guy. And they right. knew it. He's documented. This is on Fox. I mean, I hope Fox goes bankrupt. They deserve it. They really do. Well, and it's even bigger than just Fox News. It's the entire Republican establishment is just this whole campaign against Trump or whatnot. I mean, the fact that pe- the people in the establishment are supporting anybody other than President Trump is just ridiculous. And, and that they're not screaming at the top of their lungs. When you see these Marxist secretaries of state and states saying they're going to not let them on the ballot, right? Are you kidding me? And and, and yeah. the Republicans are not stopping all business in Washington. Yeah. No, I agree. I, yeah, 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 yeah. I agree with that one. Um, sorry about that. I, real world, real, real life, real life situation. So the bottom line is, you're not watching it, right? Nope. I'll I watch will. it after, after the fact. I will. Like, like the, uh, like the clips. Like tomorrow, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Jay, Jay, you watching it? Yeah, me and the wife, we have a plan. We're gonna get order pizza. We're gonna okay. pull up the debate. We'll pause okay. the debate to watch the Trump Tucker. I'm excited. Trump's talking that it's gonna be on fire. So I can't wait to hear what he has to say. And uh, then yeah, he's uh, going and, to jail in the morning. Well, yeah, he's showing up in Georgia. And that's why yesterday when McGregor was on, and I was calling people in Atlanta crazy. They're going to throw him in a holding cell, I I guess. I mean, I, I wouldn't doubt it. Hey, some of his people are um, getting mug shots already, man. Oh, yeah. Mark Meadows he's is ba- ba- begging him to keep him out of jail. Yep. You know what? You know what? <laughs> Mark, man. Mark, look, I never thought Mark was built for jail in the first place. I mean, I, that's me. And he's trying every bit of. He's uh, scared. Yeah, he is scared. Yeah, he is. Scared. Well, and it's not just these folks, because I, I don't know if any of these charges will turn into anything other than keeping Trump tied up and not campaigning. But I mean, this is just a shot across the bow. Anybody who wants to work with the Trump organization or the administration or, any, you know, any of that, like you have to have your legal retainer queued up. Like, I will accept the job, Mr. Trump. Can I negotiate a legal retainer? Because I know one of 12 federal agencies are coming after me. Well, think of this too. Think the whole, the government in Georgia is Republican. It is. And they're quiet. Yeah. They are quiet. I mean, where's governor Kemp? I don't I care if you don't like Trump, where are you at on the constitutionality yeah. of all this? I right. thought to myself, I thought to myself when I first saw it, I was like, he can't. I mean, it's like, I, I bet he's smiling right now. I really, I, I, I believe that he's smiling and feeling vindicated right now because uh, probably he feels that Donald Trump uh, uh, put a stain on the state with uh, with his claims about Georgia. And 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 look, you know what? We go back to 2016. There was something wrong with Georgia in, um, back in 2016. Kemp is what's I wrong mean, with Georgia. Yeah, I mean this 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 thing this thing didn't start in 2020. It, it started way before. 
And it's not you just know? Georgia. Mississippi had Haley Barber. Yes. You remember that? I mean, it, this yeah. is not new. Yes. No, it's not new. And, and actually, it's a it's a good point. 2016, especially when Republicans had control, they should have investigated election irregularities. I think we were just so happy we won. Yeah, we didn't go back and look, but there was a lot of really weird numbers that year. A lot of people should have realized it, and it went over a lot of people's heads. I mean, again, like, again, we talk about Pennsylvania, we talk about um, Arizona, we talk about Georgia. Virginia was in the mix too, okay. And um, Las Vegas, Las Vegas had problems in 2016, and so did Wisconsin. So does. Yeah, so did Wisconsin, Michigan, and we and and Michigan. It's like, um, they did it, or they started, like they started it, and nobody said anything. So they were like, okay, now we started on two. We started out on level two. Let's see what we do over the next four years. Let's see what we can do in um, 2024 because now he's elected. Now he's in there. So let's get this thing going. Oh, well, oh, we got a pandemic. Okay. Oh, I just, I mean, if you want to go deep dive, I mean, I think they thought they had it throttled up enough to take 2016. They just were shocked. And I think that's part of why you see in 2020. Yeah, yeah, that's why you saw in 2020 where they're like, we can't let him win again. So in let's just stop they, it were tra- boom. they were trying to get him to be the nominee in 2016. Right. They thought they didn't, had no idea that Republicans weren't GOP E types. Right. Right. You right. know, I yeah. think oh, that's can you imagine if we them. can you imagine if we put up a candidate like Romney in 2016? We would have lost in a landslide. Anybody but Trump would have lost. Yep. And that's what I kept trying to tell people. I kept trying to tell all those Trump supporters, I mean uh, Cruz supporters. It's like, you guys, man, you better do some math. That guy is not going to beat the Clinton machine. Right. Nope. He can look, he can stand on stage and he can sound like a preacher all you want to. And you can clap and play the organ and collect money. He's not going to beat Hillary. You you get a bunch of Republicans with money. They go to CPAC. Yeah, he can win that straw poll. But he's not going to win in Detroit. No, no. Mm -mm. Well, and your average blue collar folks like they weren't inspired by any of the i mean if you take any of those folks on stage tonight <laughs> are are you going to get any plumber or blue collar guy to come out and say i'm going to go crawl over glass to vote for that guy <laughs> it's it's a shame it's embarrassing it, is embarrassing. it tells you everything you need to know about that party though right That's what's really not what's really embarrassing is larry elder is trying to get in he's and suing he's, them. i yeah, want him up like, there i don't I, I mean, really, I don't because you know it's going to turn into a black that and black that and that. I, I mean it, it's not about that for real. It's not you know. I'm sorry. Can I that's, just give a shout me. out to the people in the comments too? Like they've connected the dots on Kemp because all the comments are blowing up where Kemp is. He's com- like he's got skeletons in his closet. He was threatened by Kemp the deep state. You know why is Kemp not doing something? Because he's part of the establishment. Either he's in on it or they got something on him and he doesn't want to stick his neck out. And, and let's let's define what part of the establishment is. He's a Democrat. Right. Basically. Basically. I mean, and and honestly, that's where they all come from anyway. I mean that's right. That's your southern roots. That, You're that, a rhino honestly. like that. <laughs> it's in there. <laughs> It, you know what I'm saying? Gotta it's a, in gotta, there. Got to be a black this and a black <laughs> Right? <laughs> well, and I'll even say, I'll get Republican. <laughs> He's just the establishment Republican that hates us and we hate him. So we can agree, you know. They are much more enamored of the other side. Governor Kemp would much rather hang out with Whitmer right. than with Mastriano. I mean, it's just the way it is. These it's people true. are phony. They're phony. <clears throat> And, and somebody gave them a here. You can be a Republican. You can stay here and you can get paid and you can come to all the cocktail parties. We'll, we'll even make you chairman of the committee. You know, that's a Democrat talking to a Republican. Yeah. But it, I mean, it, 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 it really gets me. Carrie Lake came out for um, uh, Larry Elder. Don't we want Larry? I said, no. 
I said, no, we don't need Larry Yada out there. We really don't. Because he's What's not going to win. He's oh. not right. He's not going to win. Why? Oh, come why, on, why, guys. Why? If we're it's getting like, the clown show up there, let's get all the clowns. We need the okay. elephants. We need the whole circus, baby. Like Larry okay. Elder belongs up there. Well, it, well, okay. It, well, if Larry Elder goes up there, then you, you got to put some more people up there. You got to dig up Ross Perot's um, skeleton remains and put them up there. They ought to just cancel the damn thing. <laughs> oh, <laughs> right? Right? It's like, uh, was it the, the Murdoch debate? Because that's basically what it is. The first loser. I mean, the first, yeah, yeah, the first loser. The only thing I like about it is it, it's got a it's going to be embarrassing. <laughs> well, you get a just all these guys trying to rip t-shirt. on Trump who's not there. Meanwhile, Trump's over chumming it up with Tucker. Hey, Tucker, what's going on? Like the two people that should be there, like Tucker should be moderating. He should still be a Fox employee, and Trump should be on the stage. And they're like, screw it, we'll just go over here and do our own thing. You know, so many. I mean, what time is the Tucker? Um, Nine. Trump debate nine nine Eastern, because yeah. because so many people on social media are like when is it when is it when is it when is it it's like come on y'all it's in Tucker. the book if you'd only look well I I didn't know that's why I was asking I was like I saw it this on, man put that yeah, stuff I just out this morning and then what time does the debate you. start have you guys looked that up yet I don't know I gotta look that up wait a minute wait a minute wait a minute whoa it starts at nine. The Tucker one does. Yeah. It's like right in the middle of the debate. I don't know if it starts at night. It's going to be released at night. Right. I think it might be pre-recorded. If, if, if it's released at nine, it's going to it's get warm. into the primetime ratings of the Fox News thing at nine o'clock. Oh, yeah. Wow. Okay. It's war. And he and he wins again. Um, you know, I, I still I still go back to uh I found a video. Of President Trump missing a debate back in 2016. I don't know if y'all remember that, but I do because he, they were saying that he was. Um, um, I remember he wasn't part of it. And when I went to find the video, because the archives are there, he missed the Fox News debate in 2016. What too. happened last night that was amazing because. I wasn't treated right. I did something that was very risky, and I think it turned out great because I'm on the front page of every paper. I'm getting more publicity than if I, you know? I don't know. And Cruz, who's in second place, he got really uh, pummeled last night. Actually, I'm glad I wasn't there because I guess all of that, he got pummeled. Wow. And, and, you know, they didn't even mention that he was born in Canada, right? You know, it's... When you're born in Canada, you're not supposed to be running for President of the United States. Prime Minister of Canada, no problem. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, but he missed the debate. I don't remember. Didn't you? I don't remember that. I do. I I, 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 I mean that's the only reason why I went to go He did. He it. he skipped a couple. And I just looked it up and I'm seeing different things in the chat, but I think the debate tonight is nine to eleven Eastern, and I think the Tucker interview is set to drop at nine. So <laughs> this is gonna be awesome. You know, it's funny if they come out there and they stop it at 1030. <laughs> like they did that CNN. Right. Right. Pull her in. Pull her in. She's, <laughs> <laughs> she's giving up too many home runs, man. <laughs> well, and I got to think some of those guys might go after DeSantis a little bit. I mean, if they really are trying to run do. a campaign. I hope they do. I hope they do. I don't think they will. I mean. Um, they see him crashing and burning on his own. They're going after Ramaswamy. No, they I could can see that. They could do that. I mean, because there's nobody else up there really to go after. DeSantis is in free fall. You know? And, and I mean, and it's all his fault, to tell you the truth. I should put it, it I mean, this sure. way. This is his last chance. This, this is his last chance. I don't think he's got a whole lot of arrows in the quiver. He's trying. <laughs> I think I think it's going to be Tulsi when she went after Kamala, man. That's what's going to be Vivek and DeSantis tonight. Like, they got no more goddamn arrows. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. T- man, well, why not let Tulsi up there then? Damn. They, the, Dem- the Democrat Party released her, didn't they? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> She's a free agent. Yeah, I kind of yeah. like Tulsi. 
We did too, right? Huh? <laughs> back in the day, back in the day, we're like, what she needs to do, she needs to jump over to the Republican Party because uh Democrats don't have good looking women and then things she and she talks like us. And then years later, she jumps over into our party. Well, she jumps out of the Democrat Party. And- she reminds me of the old Democrat Party, which was they had good, honest people with really bad ideas. And I think Tulsi's got like seems to be a pretty genuine, pretty honest person. But she just has some really bad ideas. I got your ticket. Kennedy Gabbard. Oh, that would be fun. Kennedy Gabbard. That might take sale. <laughs> yeah. Well, Kennedy and Joe Gabbard. Biden, the more you watch this clown, it's like he quiet quit. It, it it reminds you of when you were like when I was working in the corporate world and you had the dude who was going to retire yeah. and it was like a year of just do, doing awful, terrible, not even trying. Like I was watching clips of him in Hawaii and I'm like, <laughs> you couldn't possibly handle this worse as a president if you tried. You know, let me talk about you know, my there's some, Corvette. There's something deep going on there, too, man. I mean, I was I was reading about that this morning. There's a ton of kids missing. Hundreds and hundreds. Thousands. Yeah. You know, I mean, it, this, this is, uh, I didn't realize this, but Hawaii has the fourth largest homeless rate in the United States. Fourth that. largest. You know where they live? Lahaina. Oh. Yeah. Now you think about that property value thing. What do you got to do? What would be your best bet to get rid of homeless people? That but, I mean, if know, they find out that that happened. Yeah. Now, God I help us. I remember living over there. I, well, you know, I lived over there for four years. I lived in Hawaii. Wow. And uh, there's a lot of stuff that you see over there. You know, we grew up with Hawaii Five O and all these and all the That's beautiful types of stuff and everything. Yeah. Yeah. When when you get over there, it's it's that and a bag and 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 so much more. But it's a whole lot of dark places over there too. Is yes, there? Yeah, there's a whole lot of dark places over there too. It's like at night, you know, you you be like, wait a minute, I'm in the I'm in the wrong neighborhood. And with those Samoans, God bless you. I, hey, what I'm gonna say, I look, I love y'all. Some big dudes. I gotta say it, but I love y'all. I I ain't got no problem with you. And bruh, bruh, shaka, shaka, bruh. Um, those Samoans don't play over there, boy. Oh no. They don't play. And, and one, uh, thing, one thing you don't want to do is take them out drinking. No, no. Another thing you don't want to do is mess with their little sister and 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 break up the wrong way. Because Air Force or not, military or not, they will, they will camp outside the gate and wait for you to come off the gate. And I'm talking about three, four brothers deep, five, five deep and some friends. Oh, the the calves on the like like Hillary <laughs> like Hillary Clinton cankles man <laughs> like they're hardcore tree stumps they're yeah like cows. tree stumps man and I mean but, and if you hit them they just stand there like you know yeah I I I, I mean believe me I've seen I've seen a lot I mean and I had some in the unit in, in yeah. army unit with me oh really mm hmm well. Uh, some can't of them drink worse than crap. Oh man, and they go on, they go on tirades when they do. Some of them, not yeah. all of them. I mean, every everybody's got the people like that, but it just seems like there's more of them. And that, they like they throw cars at each other and stuff. <laughs> they are they are country like, strong and mean. If you make them mad, you ain't lying. It's like it's like they're loving before that. Bra, bra, come here, bra. <laughs> <laughs> now that we've thoroughly offended the small community, sorry about that, guys. But you know it's true. I'm I, sorry. I love, you out with I, I, do, I love him. Yeah, I love him. I I love him to death. We wouldn't have wrestling without him. So, um, uh, with that said, we 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 have a special guest coming on uh, right after the break. He's running for president, but he won't be on the stage tonight. But he wants to let all of you know that he's run for president. And he also has another way of looking at some things. 
when it comes to the presidential race and some of the people that we like, you know, so we're going to have a chance to talk to him, ask some questions. Uh, but believe me, he's strong in what he believes. I tell you that. I, I heard him on the spaces one time. I was like, oh, and I mean, I'm, I've known him for a little bit. So, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see what he says. You are watching the Wayne Dupree podcast along with Jason Robertson and the godfather of conservative radio, Mr. Hotch Bailey Jr. Myself, Wayne Dupree, here on Red Voice Media. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to talk more. If you have any questions for us regarding the debate, hold them over. Hold them over. Uh, you know that clip I put out yesterday about the, the Cuba hotels? A lot of people were like, hmm. Oh, yeah. The Cuba hotels, huh? Hmm. Barracks. The barracks. <laughs> the barracks. The barracks are holding what um what'd you call them? Uh weapons? No. Uh yeah, you call them some type of weapons, right? You call them the hotel uh what what does she call them? She called them some type of weapons. She she said the building of the hotel, everything that they do, they do everything they physically do is built towards taking over the world. I mean, that's kind of what I got from it. I'm not connecting what you're saying, though. Yeah, military applications. Yeah, something yeah. like that. Yeah, kind yeah. of like Walmarts, if you look at their design. The Walmart super centers, the newer constructions, are are built structurally to be converted to, like, emergency shelters and stuff. Oh, A lot wow. of people don't know that. that. Yeah. yeah, I didn't know that. Okay. All right, we'll be right Attention back. Americans, breaking news. Biden's dangerous plan for a digital dollar is underway. Don't be fooled. It won't benefit you. Take action now. The Federal Reserve phase deployment of FedNow began on July 1st, 2023. Be prepared. This may catch many off guard. Your hard-earned assets are in jeopardy. But there's a simple legal tax loophole to opt out of the digital dollar. Reach out to American Alternative Assets for a free wealth protection guide and discover how to safeguard your wealth with gold and silver IRAs against a failing dollar and volatile markets. Visit protectfrombiden.com. This invaluable guide provides precise steps to transfer your IRA or 401k into precious metals without any tax consequences. Be smart. Don't let Biden force you into using the government government's new digital dollar. Visit protectfrombiden.com to get your free guide and get started. Again, that's protectfrombiden.com. When I invented my pillow, my passion was to help each and every one of you. And 20 years later, all of your support is what keeps us going. Because of you, we've been able to create thousands of USA jobs and help millions get the best sleep ever. To thank you, my employees and I are bringing you a limited edition my pillow. The Giza Elegance My Pillow is made with my patented adjustable fill, the most amazing cotton, and a two-inch pipe gusset. It has four custom loft levels, machine washable and dryable, and you get my 60-day money-back guarantee and 10-year warranty. Go to MyPillow.com or call the number on your screen. Use your promo code to get your limited edition 20th anniversary MyPillow queen size. Retails for $69.98, now only $19.98. That's right, get a queen size MyPillow for only $19.98. From all of us here at MyPillow, Thanks America! Welcome back to the show, ladies and gentlemen. We are live here on Red Voice Media Network. Happy to have you. Let me introduce once again the godfather of conservative radio, Mr. Hutch Bailey Jr. Hello, everybody. And also Mr. G.R. Robinson from Muslim Soda. Hey, buckle up, everybody. It's going to be a spicy interview. Ladies and gentlemen, we have um, a young man that um, that is that um, I have known actually for a little bit. We follow each other on social media. And uh, let me see. Let me see. We... Um, I want to make sure I want to make sure he's ready. Yep, he's ready. We're going to going to bring him in here. What's up, Doctor Shiva? How you doing? Oh, sounds like you're muted, Doctor. You're muted. Oh wait, hold on. Hang on. There is that better? Yeah, there you go. Giddy up. What's up, Doc? Good. How you guys doing? All right, all right. 
listen, um, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Doctor Doctor Shiva is uh, running for the uh, for the Oval Office. At as a matter of fact, he is out there. Um, the the, um, the GOP. Well, he can actually break it down a little bit more. Uh, it doesn't look like the GOP is recognizing him right now, but that, that doesn't mean that he's still not um, talking and trying to raise funds and stuff like that to run. Uh, I heard him in the spaces um, a couple of weeks ago, and um, I mean he he put forth some some talking points that uh, I had never heard before, but a whole lot of common sense that came with it, and. Um, he's been out of the country and I'm glad he's back. So doctor, doctor, I, um, let's, let's talk. You, you are still running for. Yes. So, so, so Wayne, this, you know, some of you may know, you know, I ran, uh, for us Senate in, in Massachusetts as a Republican against Elizabeth Warren. Some of you may know in 2018, the slogan was only the real Indian can defeat the fake Indian, which is a very great (laughs) slogan. And that then was awesome. In in that was in tw- and then in 2020, I decided to run as a Republican, and um, we were the ones, you know, in my Republican primary, uh, we had 3,000 volunteers on the ground. You know, we raised two million bucks in a Republican primary in Massachusetts, and by all accounts, we won that election. But the Republicans in Massachusetts colluded with the Democrats um, mm. to re- literally steal our election, and that led to my u- putting on my MIT hat as an engineer, doing all the analysis which went viral before all the Trump stuff took place. Um, But in the presidential election, I'm running as an independent. And the reason I decided to do that was because, you know, you know, you guys may know I have a bunch of degrees from MIT and I started recognizing that um, there's a very, very powerful graph that you'll find up on our site on shivaforpresident.com. It's a very interesting graph that goes from 1980 till today. And there are two lines on that graph. One line is a straight line going like this, which is a life expectancy average of all the industrialized nations. And it's going in like a 45 degree angle. There's another red line on that graph, which is a life expectancy that's a, of, of the United States population since 1980. And the line goes like this. OK, so if you have a child today, your child's life expectancy is going to be lower than yours. So just think about what I'm saying. And this is not because of the vaccine stuff that just occurred with the pandemic and all that, you know, which I came out against. I came out against lockdowns and all of that in 2020. By the way, Booby F. and Kennedy, as I call him, was promoting lockdowns. Trump was promoting lockdowns. Okay, but the point was, as a scientist, I knew something was really wrong. But if you look at that graph, it fundamentally reveals that we need a systems overhaul, because since 1980, whether it was Republican, Reagan or Democrat, or you know uh, Obama or Bush or Trump or anyone, the overall network of policies, be it Obamacare, be it the environmental toxins, be it the stress that the average family now endures, is destroying the lifespan of the average American. So just let's consider that life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. But that one key performance indicator, if you want to use the Harvard Business School terms, right, mm-hmm. of life expectancy reveals the fact that both wings of the establishment for the last 70 years have destroyed the American public, literally destroyed life expectancy. And it's not any one issue. It's a systemic issue. It's a network of issues. The average American today has $400 in their bank account on a rainy day. So people are under incredible stress to basically survive. And as a MIT trained systems biologist, a guy not only created the first email system, but I created the technology that can literally map out molecular pathways in the body. What I can tell you is a policy affects your biology. Let me give you an example. When they did lockdowns, a policy, that affected different molecular pathways in your body. It affected inflammation in your body. It affected oxidative stress. It affected mitochondrial respiration. What do I mean by that? It means that it actually aged you, okay? It destroyed your immune system. Stress, as you know, cortisol affects the immune system. So the policies that are being made by these, whatever you want to call them in Washington, are directly affecting people's biology. I call it policy to biology. Now, a guy like me, who's an engineering systems guy who has studies engineering, studies biology, can see this blatantly, that a particular policy has affected people's physiology. And when you really get a handle on this, you really start 
probably should get really angry at what's been going on in this country. But Democrats mm -hmm. and Republicans have destroyed the life, actually the life expectancy. So, and this is what happens when we keep voting for the lesser of two evils. The lesser of two evils is basically destroying your children. So that's why, Wayne, I decided to run as an independent because all the both major establishment parties are essentially one unit party. And even if they throw out some of these guys and we'll talk about, they literally steal my talking points and mimic it because they essentially want to suck people back into the establishment. And this guy, mm -hmm. I call him Vivek the snake, is an example of that. He's a freaking snake. If you really look at him, he went to Harvard on a biology degree and then got a Yale law degree. And look at what he did. I'll give you the example talking on this topic on healthcare. A company called GSK, a big pharma company, big pharma, created a drug for supposedly helping Alzheimer's, dementia, and Parkinson's. They created this drug which failed four clinical trials. That's pretty hard to do. It failed four clinical trials. So it's a dead drug. This, I don't even know what how many four-letter words I want to use them to describe this fellow, <clears throat> created a company that went bought that drug for $5 million, a failed drug. All right. And then he had his mother, his mother, who was part of the small company, take one of the clinical trials, and it's called a completer analysis. So he took one of the failed trials, threw out all the people who didn't complete the clinical trial, which means they probably had adverse effects, and repositioned the drug as a success. All right. Oh. And did an IPO on it, took oh. it public on billions of dollars of valuation, sold his equity in the company, made 50 million bucks, and then delayed the final clinical trial, knowing it was to fail for about a year to two years, and then you see the stock tank. Now, that means this guy doesn't care anything about actually solving a problem. It was all about a financial engineering, abuse these patients, and this is the kind of people we want running for president of the United States. It's a scumbag. And you take Booby Effing Kennedy, another guy who talks a big game, but go look at his tweets. He was promoting lockdowns in 2020. While I, in March of 2020, were running demonstrations against lockdowns, I did scientific papers exposing why the vaccine, uh, why the mask mandates were wrong. And in 2019, so you, you have to really look at these people's history because where mm -hmm. we are right now, Wayne, we're at a very important point in political history and technology where people are literally watching what sound bites work. They reuse those sound bites over here. And they want people to have amnesia about their history. I mean, this right. freaking Vivek the snake was promoting mask mandates. And they asked him, how come you promoted mask mandates? Oh, he goes, at the time I was being anti-establishment because Fauci was against masks. So I decided to be pro, pro masks. I mean, the level of duplicity of these people. So mm -hmm. if you look at my history, you know, I grew up in India in what is called a caste system. We were considered the lowest caste, not the Brahmins, which is where he comes from. For example, so I had to understand the fight the injustice of the caste system as a four year old kid. I learned about traditional systems of medicine from my grandmother. So when I came to the United States when I was seven years old, I knew all the opportunities America had to offer. So by the time I was 14, I invented the first email system, you know, went to MIT, went, uh, went to MIT, didn't just fake my degrees, actually got four degrees, won every award at MIT. So I've always had to bust my ass, not like I didn't come from some cabal or some click. Right, and it's about right. time that we have actual people who are real Americans and real Indians, you know, wow. bottoms up people. None of these people are bottoms up, Wayne. None of them. They're all top down. They all come from the cabal. And what's really, really disgusting about them is they literally are mouthing words that completely contradict their actions. And so that's why, you know, I decided to run. And the good thing is, you know, we've mobilized a movement which is educating hundreds of thousands of people across the world. It's called Truth, Freedom and Health. We teach people the interconnection between the movements for freedom and truth and health. Without freedom, you can't do great science to get to truth. And without truth and freedom, you don't know what's good for your health. And if you're unhealthy, you don't have the wherewithal, the mental or the physical health to fight for freedom or health. So the movement for truth, freedom and health 
is literally the operating system of my run for president. And if you go look on social media, you will, and that's why I appreciate you, Wayne, for having me on. You will see all the other grifters, be it, I can't curse on here, right? No. You're good. Fucker Carlson. <laughs> okay. I call him Fucker Carlson, right? <laughs> or Joe Rogan, all right? Or the idiot, you know, Russell Brand. None of, even though they follow me, will never put me on their show because they're all yeah. part of this media, this neo media cabal that is essentially. Well, you know what? You know what? The way, the way, the way that I look at them, are and I don't know why the conservative movement or you the you, used to be conservative movement. I don't know why they have fallen into uh the 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 Pied Piper type of thing where uh, there you said you it. I mean name, I've said it money, it's money, it's money, Wayne. It, yeah, if you it's have good. a name, then uh and that name comes out with keywords that you use in your everyday lexicon. Then that like make follows you to them. It's like, oh, they're telling the truth. They're telling, and all they're doing is just grabbing you or for their audience, and they really don't care. I've never seen uh what's the what's the one that you just uh Fucker the, Carlson? No, 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 the other one. Joe Rogan, Joe Rogan, Rogan or, Brand. Yeah. I never seen Russell Brand doing any outreach or talking to any conservatism on the ground or uh, Nothing. You know, I, I've never seen him do that. But as long as they have a podcast, they can sit behind a mic and say, "We need to go to war." And the next day, they're right back in front of their. Did y'all go? Did you go? You know what I'm saying? Hutch, Hutch, you got a question, or Jr. You got a question? I, right? I do. I, I, you know, and and I'm totally. I was totally unprepared uh, for your opening statement, Doctor. It was wonderful, uh, but it's going to cause my question to change. Now, now I, that that's fascinating when you do that life life expectancy study. I mean, that that's really something that we we used to talk about on this show. And again, I'll go back to it's money. Um, why do we have food that has seventy five ingredients and it's like rice and it's seventy five ingredients? What is the the Food and Drug Administration? Why are those two entities in the same agency? I mean, it, it makes me wonder, do they, are they, are they developing this food so it will become future pharma customers? Yeah, you know, it's, it's called, in fact, there's a new term that they call it food, P-H-O-O-D. I don't know if you've heard this term, no, where pharmaceuticals no. and foods are being integrated together. Okay. That's what's actually well, going on. Yeah. So the bottom line is this, okay, that there's a revolving door between academia and these government institutions. So the guy who's ahead of the department, uh, let's say neurology at Harvard, may one day be in the FDA. And then he helps his buddies. Uh, I'll give you an example. There's this prick. His name is uh, David Sinclair. He's a professor at Harvard. He's a, he's, he is a prick. Let me tell you why. He does aging research. There's a very interesting supplement called NMN, which is a form of B vitamin, which has amazing effects on mitochondrial respiration. It's really an anti-aging supplement. Um, it, it comes in certain foods, okay? But anyway, this guy knows it works. He then went to the FDA and got it made into a drug and then had the FDA take it off the shelves. I used to take it regularly, okay? You can't get it on Amazon anymore. So what they're doing is they're finding nutrients that work and they're making them into drugs. So it becomes very expensive for ordinary people to get. And then they're taking yeah. drugs, which actually hurt people and pushing them. You say, but yeah. this is happening because you have scumbags who are coming from the elites. I mean, what what does this guy, I mean, if, if what does Jared Kushner know really about everyday people? What does Ivanka right. Trump know about everyday people? What does this yeah. guy Ramaswampy know about everyday people? At the end of the day, these people do not represent us. And so that is why if you look back at the history of the United States, or for that matter, the world, Anything that has substantially changed has been through bottoms up movements. I mean, you'll see right. me, Wayne. I don't have my flyer here, but you'll you'll see me on the ground. I have a one page flyer. I'll be out of the train station today handing it out to thousands of people. Mm -hmm. I believe we need to build a ground movement. I've always been a ground activist. So mm -hmm. I know that a guy like me, they actively make me invisible now. You know, in 2020, we got about a half a billion people who know, knew about our movement. I was a guy who exposed the backdoor portal to Twitter in our historic lawsuit. You know, we're the ones who found out 
in federal court where I represented myself that the government has an unholy alliance with social media companies. It was called a partner support portal. We told fucker Carlson about it and Glenn Greenwald, that dweeb, and none of them covered it. They waited two years to amplify this bogus limited hangout called the Twitter files. And they mm -hmm. actually concealed our lawsuit for two years. You see, these guys are part of this swarm, as I call it. They delay truth. To your yep. point, Wayne, they wait to the sound bites when it's convenient for put it out and hutch to your point to make money. They don't want to fucking change the world. These guys right. you know, are you. What's that? I was going to say you, you bring up an interesting point and just to, to kind of summarize, like you grew up in India in the caste system. And, and, where and in New Jersey and at working class towns in Patterson in Newark. Right, but no, what I'm saying is you understand the, the elites versus the plebs. At a very I mean, it goes level. back to the Roman times. And yep. that's, that's what we're living in today. People just don't realize it. Yep. They distract us with left versus right when it's really the power class versus the 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 normal folks, as we call them around here. And, and so, so I think we're all aligned with that. So let's say you get elected president and you look at the members of Congress and we believe a vast majority of them are corrupt and are not serving our purposes. That's one of the things we talk a lot about on the show. So if you had to name off like five or 10 true Americans serving in the Congress that you would form bridges with to help try to change the country, who would those people be? None of them. Look, <laughs> none of them. Let me tell you why. So we, every single one. They, yeah, we need a systems overhaul. All of these yep. people, every single one of them. Let me give you an example of that. On November 16th, 2018, CISA was signed into law, the Cybersecurity Infrastructure Security Agency. On December, um, in, in December of 1791, what happened, right? We passed something called the First Amendment, which said Congress shall pass no law to bridge freedom of speech. Congress shall pass no law to bridge freedom of speech. I'll repeat that again. Congress, the legislative branch, will pass no law to bridge freedom of speech. One of the most foundational principles of humanity. That's what made America so powerful because you had, for the first time in human today even, even though the First Amendment on social media is destroyed, that 3% mm -hmm. of humanity has this ability to speak freely against their government. Well, on November 16, 7, uh, 2018, Trump signed into law CISA. Congress passed a law to bridge freedom of speech. And that was unanimously, J. Rob, unanimously voted by every person in the House and unanimous consent by Senate. All these people are scumbags because they destroyed the First Amendment. They all did that. So that's why we need a systems overhaul, because if you look at these policies, your child's life expectancy is going to be lower than you. How do we get here? Right. So they, they don't none of these people. The only people I trust are you, Hutch, you know, Wayne, you everyday working people have to get up in the morning, do a job and they come from nothing. You know, and we've had to Jared Kushner. What the fuck does he know about anything? What does Ivanka <laughs> Trump know? Why the fuck were these people even in the goddamn White House? And Trump hmm. talked about draining the swamp. He brought the swamp in. Right. He never got rid of Fauci. He, he set, claimed he had big brass balls. Well, if you're going in there to be a revolutionary, then be a fucking revolutionary. Don't go in there and say, oh, I couldn't do this. I couldn't do that. And all these MAGA cult people, look what they've done. Right. To your point, Wayne, they I mean, I was the one who exposed the entire backdoor portal when I, when they put me back on Twitter. They thought I was going to be a good, you know, house slave, as Malcolm X would say, and bow down mm -hmm. to Musk. The first tweet I put out when I got back on December 2022, after two years of being thrown off for exposing the backdoor portal, was I said, hey, Elon, why don't you make me your CEO? Well, that went viral. It got 20 million views. Every day after that, I said, Elon, are you going to take down the backdoor portal? My views went from 500,000 views a day to 300,000. Now it's about 5,000 views. So you make mm -hmm. me back into a, you know, I, I wasn't willing to be a house slave, right? I'm still a field right. slave. Right. But all the other house slaves, Robert Kennedy promoting Booby Kennedy, promoting and fighting censorship. Everyone, Dinesh D'Souza, that little rat promotes him. Right. All these conservatives <laughs> start promoting Musk, James Woods included. And I know. You, and Yeah. And I mean, I'm I'm one of those that from the beginning, um, I didn't fall for that. I didn't fall on my knees and start praising um, Elon Christ. I didn't do it because I watched and I was like, 
Um, everybody, all of y'all are coming out here and saying that he's all this and all that. I was like, but he hadn't fixed it. He hadn't fixed anything yet. The backdoor because, portal this way, the government yeah. backdoor portal into Twitter is fully operational for yep. government oh. to launder censorship. It's in our lawsuit. We discovered it. It's black and yep. white. So here you have Dinesh D'Souza, supposedly a conservative, bowing down to Musk. And I lost 20% of my quote unquote conservative followers for bashing Musk. But then he appoints that woman, Yaccarino. Yeah, yeah. And then people yeah. start saying, oh, Dr. Shiva, we're so sorry. You know, we yeah. stopped following you. <coughs> These are the same things I did that. when I used to expose Fauci, you see? So you have the woke conservatives and you have the woke liberals. Yeah. They're all yeah. the same ilk because they're yeah. trying to look for a leader from above. They do not want to do the hard work building a bottoms up movement. There you go. There and, you go. And then you have morons there you like Russell Brand, you know, who thinks he's a guru, talks a bunch of shit. So you have all these fake idols right now. Right. That's right. why I call the swarm. Right. So what's right. your uh, what's your quick 60 second take on Joe Biden? He's a complete moron. Come on. I mean, he just has bad PR, right? He he doesn't know how to cover up his nonsense, right? But, you know, Jared Kushner just has better PR, right? He took $2 billion from the Saudis, right? Interest-free loan, yeah. basically. Yeah. And Hunter yeah. Biden just doesn't have, you know, he, he does the same thing, but in a fucked up way. <laughs> so you have to understand that it doesn't matter. You know, it's like you have one mobster fighting another mobster. Yeah. And why the fuck do we care if Trump gets indicted or not? Let them all get indicted. It has nothing to do with working people. But to your point, J. Rob is fundamentally what we have is we have a caste system in the United States now. Yep. And it's a multiracial global caste system. So you throw in Jared Kushner, you have Musk who comes from apartheid South Africa. You bring in this Brahmin Ramaswamy from India, right? They're a multiracial caste system. And so my parents left the caste system of India, but now we have a global caste system. And you and I are not part of it. And what right. they fear is someone like me who comes from below exposing them. And that's why if you look on social media, people will hit Joe Rogan. Hey, Joe Rogan, how come you don't have Dr. Shiva on? So the invisibility they do to me is going to backfire on them. And that's why Wayne and Hutch and J-Rob, I appreciate you guys having me on. Because ultimately, the independent news, like what we're doing right here, is going to mm -hmm. win. Because the more they make a guy like me with all my degrees from MIT, with all, I mean, I've won every one of their establishment awards. You know, I've fought, I have my credentials, my, you know, veteran stripes, you know, exposing Fauci, all exposing the backdoor portal, exposing election fraud in 2020 when it mattered. I didn't wait like all of these doctors two years later writing books and doing movies after, you know, the house was burned down. So I think we're at a very important time that it's going to separate the wheat from the chaff. And, you know, they have this, some random guy now doing songs, talking as though he's like the next... Hank Williams or the Woody, Woody Guthrie, right? So they are finding more and more people to mimic the real fighters to make sure people get suckered back in to the establishment. It's a very, very interesting process that they're doing right now. Let me ask you one more thing while, while we got you here, because I, I read some things that you were advocating for. I want to see if I'm on the right track here. For the last two or three years, I've been taking the regimen of about 1,600 milligrams of liposomal vitamin C. I just wonder if that's uh, that sounds good uh, to you. Yeah, so, so, so if you go look at March 23rd of 2020, I wrote a letter to Trump. It said, Economic and Immune Health for America. I said, do not shut down the country. I said, I'm one of the leading guys in the world on the immune system. I had just given a, a prestige lecture at the National Science Foundation. Marla Maples, his former, his ex-wife, delivered that letter to him, and I got a call from the White House. And I said, look, do not shut down the country. There's no reason to lock down the country. In fact, Hutch, I laid out a protocol. I said, for the people who have COVID, fine, quarantine them. For the people who have pre-existing conditions, give them you know, uh, uh, 100,000 IUs of vitamin D, 400,000 IUs of vitamin A, quercetin and zinc. I laid it all out. These are proven methodologies and people are in the ICU add to that 100 grams of vitamin C delivered as IV. Again, all of these are noted, thousands and thousands of papers to work. Still today, I get emails from people saying, Dr. Shiva, thank you. Well, Trump didn't do it, but the reality is vitamin C is a very powerful immune modulator, right? It stops the cytokine storm. 
one of the things we need to educate people on when you get whatever it is, a virus or fungus, something exogenous coming into you, that is not eating you up. It's not like a horror movie where the virus enters and bleeds your lungs out, right? Or, or uh, sorry, bleeds your heart out or your lungs out, right? The reality is when you, it, it, it is many of these viruses go to different parts of your body. They like a home. Ebola likes to go to your endothelial in the heart, right? The coronavirus likes to go to your epithelial in your lungs. And what they're doing is they, they test your immune system. If people's immune systems are weak, the body overreacts. It's like driving across a pothole with no shock absorbers, right? But if your immune system is mm -hmm. strong, you, you, you feel it, you get a little sniffles, and you get stronger. I haven't been sick since then. And I smoked for 45 years. Yeah, yeah. But I'm saying so you, because you've been taking some of these supplements, ideally you get them from the sun and foods, right? Mm -hmm. But we can't because of what they've done to the soil. But if you supplement yourself, your body's immune system is strong and you immunomodulate. It's like you go over that pothole, you have nice good shocks and you go through them. So the idea is boosting the immune system. So it's not about pro-vax or anti-vax. We have to go to the systemic issue. What are we doing to support people's immune system? And, you know, I do a lot of aging research, but if you look at the immune system and aging, they're very closely connected. If you want to live long, have a strong immune system. If you want to right. live short, destroy your immune system. And they don't want to talk about that, which means by design, they want to kill people early. That's right. what that's right. the only logical conclusion you come to. So, Or they want you on a pharmaceutical instead of... Yes, yes. Or they want you on a pharmaceutical uh, and milk you or take vitamins like this guy Sinclair has done and make it into a pharmaceutical so you can't even right. get, and then that's what the danger is. But the it's point is- Hydroxychloroquine. Exactly. And you go down a list of things. So we live in a very important time that if you use health as a fundamental inner, you know, the indicator of how well a society is doing, we're not doing that good. Right. And, it's, and it's Republicans and Democrats left and right. And we have yep. to go back and we have to build a bottoms up movement. And that's why- uh, we're doing this. And Wayne, I'd love to come back on um, yeah. Wednesday or Thursday. That sounds great. Yep. Okay. Um, thank you, Dr. Shiva, for thank joining you. us. That was awesome. And, uh, yeah, thank you, yeah, guys. Yeah. And, um, and I know I know, uh, not everybody is going to agree with uh, everything you said, but that's why we record these things. People can go back and they can do their own research and find out and like, wait, okay, well, you he did say that, you know, he did say that too, especially when they research and they find out on their own. So uh, they can find you at um, Shiva for president.com. Yeah. yeah. They can go to Shiva for president.com. You know, you can go there and volunteer, you know, we got to get on the ballot in every state. We're doing it all bottoms up, but they can mm -hmm. also go to truthfreedomhealth.com, And we've created really a university for people to learn the science of systems. It, you know, I used to teach it at MIT. Um, you know, Brzezinski, Kissinger, all the elites learn system science, and it is what they use to control people. But my view is like Prometheus bringing fire to the world. We want to bring that knowledge to everyone. We've educated right. now about 300,000 people all over the world. But the idea is we need to create bottoms up leaders. You know, it can't be based on looking above for some savior to come anymore. It's not going to happen. In fact, right. that's going to enslave us even worse. That's what I think, too. You know, what? we we, um, we look forward to bringing you back. Don't go too far. Don't don't go out the country again. We, but no, no, uh, I'm, I'm we, back here for good. <laughs> okay, okay. All right, we 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 will have you back. Thanks a lot, Doc. Thanks, guys. When I invented my pillow, my passion was to help each and every one of you. And 20 years later, all of your support is what keeps us going. Because of you, we've been able to create thousands of USA jobs and help millions get the best sleep ever. To thank you, my employees and I are bringing you a limited edition My Pillow. The Giza Elegance My Pillow is made with my patented adjustable fill, the most amazing cotton, and a two-inch pipe gusset. It has four custom loft levels, machine washable and dryable, and you get my 60-day money-back guarantee and 10-year warranty. Go to MyPillow.com or call the number on your screen. Use your promo code to get your limited edition 20th anniversary MyPillow queen size. Retails for $69.98, now only $19.98. That's right, get a queen size MyPillow for only $19.98. From all of us here at MyPillow, Thanks America! We interrupt today's programming to bring unfortunate news. Biden's dangerous plan for a digital dollar is underway. 
Don't be fooled. It won't benefit you. So take action now. The Federal Reserve's phased deployment of FedNow began on July 1st, 2023. Be prepared. This may catch many off guard and put your hard-earned assets in jeopardy. But here's the good news. There's a simple legal tax loophole to opt out of the digital dollar. Speak to someone at American Alternative Assets for a free wealth protection guide and discover how to safeguard your wealth with gold and silver IRAs against a failing dollar and volatile markets. Dial 833, the number 2 USA Gold. Yes, call now, 833-287-2465. This invaluable guide provides precise steps to transfer your IRA or 401k into precious metals without any tax consequences. Don't let Biden force you into using the government's new digital dollar. Call 833, the number 2 USA Gold. Yes, call now. 833-287-2465. Act swiftly. 833-287-2465. And we're back. Oh, my gosh. I don't know about you guys, but that was a heck of an interview. <laughs> Wayne's deep in thought on something. <laughs> Wayne's like, look at it. Is my YouTube channel still alive? How about our what Facebook pages? What was the name of the Wagner boss? Korshokin or something like that. Um, breaking news, Wagner boss. Harvey Say his last name again. Korshokin, I think. Yeah. With a K? With a something G, like that, starting yeah. with a G, and then a K, okay. yeah. Okay, well, this must be something else then. Well, maybe I'm wrong. What's the name? No, I think it starts with a P. I can't say that, huh? Right, it's a Russian name. Yeah, what? Um, why? Why? Jenny Prags? Yeah, Perjokin. Him. him. Yeah, yeah, huh? Perjokin. Is that him? Yeah, yeah. Dead in plane crash in northwest of Moscow, Russia. No yeah. way. He was just. He was just in Africa the other day. Dude, Must the plane on his way back. Down. The, the uh, plane is going down. I mean, you uh, mess with. Putin I mean, right I, I mean, I'm. I'm literally watching the plane go down in a tailspin with with the smoke going down. That oh my god. I mean that's what happens when you start a coup against Russia. <laughs> yeah, but Wait, he just said Yeah, ahead. well no, he just said the other day, um he just said the other day that they were getting ready to do something for for Russia and and, and, and stuff. Oh, maybe it was Zelensky. No, know? that's him. That's him. No, I His mean, that did it. No, no, no. He's right, right. He's dead. That's him. Oh, that's crazy. Wait till Zelensky plan. finds out that the CIA has an early retirement plan for him. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they won't let another Saddam just to, thing. Just look at history. Look at what happened to DM in Vietnam. Once you, once you're, once they don't need you anymore, see ya. Because you know too much. That's it. Well, and Zelensky, it's so funny. Zelensky's that, a dead man walking. Oh, And it's so funny, too, some of this stuff that just happens right out in the open. Like, someday we'll, we may, we'll probably never find out, but what really happened with that Russian coup and the Wagner group and all that. But, I mean, if we could have placed a bet for does he live till the end of the year, we all would have said no. I mean, it's just... He'll have an accident, get tied up to a tree, something will happen. So there's know. some things going through the chat room that are legitimate. Um, Dr. Shiva was born in India. Yes. Yeah. So, he said so help, he help said me that. out on that. Oh, you know what? He was going to explain how he can and how Rajaswami can run. I mean, well, not Rajaswami, but um, how they can run for president because of something uh naturalized and, citizen something like that yeah yeah i mean yeah he he wouldn't be doing it if he couldn't run it, there was some there's some way that he can run that he explained it in the space the other night yeah i know ladies and gentlemen that's why i want to have him back on because um as you know he can talk and uh we have other questions for him but we weren't able to get it to him. So uh, that first segment blew me away. Yeah. 
I mean, life expectancy, it's been going up my whole life, and now it's going down. Well, here's here's what I'll say about Dr. Shiva after looking at some of his stuff, and I, I hope the audience takes this as intended. I am a huge Alex Jones fan, and I think the stuff Alex Jones brings up ends up becoming true five years, ten years down the line. And when you first hear it and see it, you're like, oh, this is kind of crazy. You know, when he was say, talking about the transgender stuff years ago or they're turning the frogs gay or or any of that stuff. And, and so but then as time goes on and here's five years, 10 years, does, it doesn't matter a thousand percent, but has mm-hmm. some some nuggets of truth. And and I think Dr. Shiva kind of falls in that bucket where yeah. he has receipts, he has stats. There's a lot of things. Oh, yeah. And and he takes some of our beliefs to the extreme. Like like we talk about there is a uniparty. It is the rich versus the poor. One of the guys I work with on my other website, like he studied Roman history where it was the plebes against the aristocrats, whatever their names were. And this has been going on from history. And that's a time we're living in now is that there's the haves and then the have nots. And welcome to the have not class. If you're watching this show, you're in the have not class. Congratulations. This is, this is the um, video of the Wagner boss. Пиздец, это беспилотник. Сбили, бабахнуло, два раза взорвалось, падает. Ты посмотри, падает. Блять. Где, блядь, бабахнет? Куда упал? Вон тут куски летят. Где ты, блядь, упал? Хуя дым пошел какой. А там он куски летят еще. Смотри, какой клуб. Поднимается. Пиздец. Меня аж трясет. Хуеть. Где это? Блядь, не видать нихуя. Вон. Около фермы. Горим. That thing was going down at a clip, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. That thing was going down at a And correct me if I'm wrong, Hutch. I mean, you're going down with smoke. Look like somebody fired on you. <laughs> I mean, I don't oh, know. Yeah, that's definitely, it has to be that. <laughs> I was going to say the, I was just checking some of the Russian telegram channels I follow in their, the <laughs> Wagner groups claiming it was Russia that shot it down. Yeah, we'll see. Really? I wouldn't, I wouldn't doubt that. You got to keep him in line, man. This guy was like almost took over the country. And, and he was literally running the catering business like 10 years ago. And now yeah. he run, ran the most powerful military. Um, yeah. I got to answer Terry, too, because Terry asked a good question. That's why it's so confusing. You talk about the rich class, but somehow Trump doesn't fit the mold. So, so let me explain it because this is important, Terry. Donald Trump was somebody who never fit into the rich establishment mold, and they try to frame him up where he did. He was always an outsider. He was always somebody that that resonated more with working class people. And the fact is, if you look at how they've targeted him and every every gear in the machine for the past seven years has gone after him, be it left, be it right, be it center, everything has come after him that only furthers my belief that he is not part of that establishment class. Anybody that's in that establishment class, they're all trash. You know, we're just talking like which pile of of turd smells the worst. And that's part of why I have a strong belief in President Trump is is they keep coming after him and he keeps not backing down. And, And you know, I agreed with him when he talked about Trump's children. Right. And and Jared Kushner, because they've never known anything different. Yep. But Donald Trump, if you know anything about New York City, and I don't, but I'll just pretend I do. If you know anything about Donald Trump, he's from he lives in Manhattan. His his empire is based in Manhattan, but he'll never be accepted by people in Manhattan because he comes from Queens. Mm-hmm. That's a really big thing in, in New York. And I would disagree with the doctor of putting him in the same category as some of these other people. 
I think he got misled and I, and I'm rationalizing it here. I am defending the guy. I'm not, this is a biased opinion. I think that he got tricked. I don't think any of us even knew we do this all the time. And I don't even think we knew how deep the deep state was until Donald Trump started getting booby trapped by it. You know, it, it's funny you say that, Hutch, because thinking about what what's that one question you'd ask President Trump if you had the opportunity to interview him. And I think I we'll could be wrong. I'm, I'm not giving that up. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll tell you kind of what I'm thinking, because I've had about 10 different ones. But we all knew the government was corrupt and the Uniparty was corrupt. Right. And I think President Trump knew. And then he got there and the people stabbing him in the back, the worst were on his side. Damn right. And yeah. so I want to know that moment when he thought the swamp was bad till he realized this is how bad it is. And, you know, we talk about that plane hitting the Pentagon moment when the second plane hit and you're like, oh, this is bad. I'm sure he had that moment as president where he's like the right, like all these guys are terrible. They all want to do terrible things to Americans. Nobody's taking care of Americans. So I I don't know what his answer would be, but I mean, we were all fooled. Like we thought the Republican Party was having our best interests at heart. So how can we, uh, how can but, we you know what, but you know what, too, let's let's uh, let's break it down for a whole lot of people on here, too. And that's his body, by the way. Oh, my gosh. Well, that's what happens when. The ambulance and stuff don't get there fast enough, and somebody on the road <laughs> drives up there with with a phone, and then posts it on um, X. Um, yeah, I, I think I think that's his body. Um, it's it's kind of blurred out though, but of course it is. Damn. Um, all the thing. I mean, like, I mean. What y'all have been talking about. Yes, totally. But I just don't get why most of the people can't accept the fact he was attacked when he first got in there. Right. And they got rid of a lot of MAGA people that helped get him elected. They got them out of the White House first. Yep. Yep. And the chief of staff, who was the establishment, Let's don't get it twisted. Right. Rents was establishment. Oh, complete. And they start, well, okay, well, we can't find anybody to take these job positions. So let's fill them. Let's fill them. Donald Trump, these people work. Okay, okay. Well, you know. And the first uh, one was Mike Pence. What, right. I mean, what? What, what don't... Y'all want to blame him, but you don't want to blame everybody else for that and okay fine you say well he's supposed to be commander in chief he's supposed to be making good decisions good decisions you don't think that the people that you hire are your enemies exactly. are, I mean, that, okay <clears throat> so we, i mean <clears throat> all those leaks in there i mean we were getting pissed off really pissed off of all the leaks that was coming from the white you're like wait a minute we are like, just day after day. I mean, hour after hour, leak, leak, leak. This don't. This doesn't usually happen. They were me, doing that. Be, you know. Let me address Harry were, here real quick, if I might. Uh, oh, Harry, man. Harry, Harry. No, I, I mean this is this is fine. Maybe maybe you saw it. Maybe you saw it before, back in the twenty fifteens and and before that. But I've been doing this since 2012, 2010, and I didn't see it. Right. I mean, I'm going to be honest. I thought there was two parties. I used to wane and I used to go to CPAC. I yeah. mean, we used to talk to these people all the time. Yeah. I had no idea until yeah. you start watching things. And then it's like, wow, Eric Holder is still free, man. And Trey yeah. Gowdy yeah. went all the time on him. Yeah. Well, think of General Flynn, who I have a ton of respect for. Someday I'd love to have him on the show. He's one of those people I really think is a true patriot and an outsider. Think of how the establishment moved to get rid of him Mike from Pence. day one. And if you look at how they got rid of him, like the court case has been thrown out. He's suing the government. They tried to ruin the guy's life. That was week one on the job for Trump. And, yeah. you know, he 
he doesn't even know which way's up. They're handing him the nuclear football. He's trying to settle into all this stuff. You have all these people from the Republican Party who kind of supported you to help get elected and like, hey, yeah, we're going to have your back. And then like, oh, you got to get rid of Flynn because some FBI thing. And then imagine the rest of the the generals didn't listen to his orders. Right. They defied his orders. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, they were lying to him about the troops in Syria. It's it's unbelievable what they did to this guy. Oh, that Syria thing. We came out. uh, Hey, President Trump, don't do that. Don't don't do that. Don't please please don't do that. The people lying to you. They, I mean, we even saw videos of people sitting out. Um, no, they didn't gas their own people. No, but but that's I mean, where we did found, it anyway. That's like, where oh. we learned Tulsi Gabbard. Yeah, that's where Tulsi Gabbard came in. She was the only one that yeah. went over there and said, "Oh no, 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 that didn't happen." Yep. Well, there. and think of it with President Trump. You can't even ha- trust your generals. Who are supposed to be the epitome of apolitical? You can't even, you can't even have them tell the truth. Why? Because these goddamn generals are getting money, and when they retire, yeah. they're going to go work for Raytheon. And, and you know that's what, Harry? why they're another, doing it. Another thing that I always thought in in my entire life, I always thought, and 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 this really bore fruit, bared fruit during the Obama administration when I thought that he was going to ruin this country. I swear, I thought the generals would come out on the side of the constitution. My right. God, was I wrong? <laughs> yep. Yeah. Well, and if you think about it too, Russia gate, the very powerful people in the Republican party knew that was crap from the start and they could have taken action to prevent that whole Russia gate narrative for spinning around for three years and even if you can't control the media, they the the Republicans could have said, no, 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 this is crap. We know it's just Hillary Clinton campaign stuff. And the Republicans didn't do it. And Trump's sitting there like, who can I trust? And that's why I want Trump 2.0. I think he will be even better and stronger after four years off because he's got to see all those people that have turned on him like they're done. He gets yeah. in office. They are the entire leadership of the intelligence community signed that letter, right? 50 of them. So, I mean, um, y'all say that Trump should know everything. Have y'all ever, the ones that are criticizing him, have you ever been, been, been tricked? Yes or no. Have you ever been tricked? Because if you haven't, then, then God bless you. Maybe you should write a book on how not to be tricked. But have you ever been tricked by anybody to get something I, for them to get something out of you or for them to use you? And then you turn around and I, I can't believe they got me. Whether it was a cop, um, 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 what's those meetings that they used to have, have people go to? Uh, uh, Amway. In, in Amway. Whether it was Amway or, or, you know, those things. Have you ever been tricked? Yes or no? And if you have, put that up there again. Put that up there again of what he said about Trump. Oh, just that Trump was supposed to know. Yeah. If if you have been tricked, you should have been smart enough to see through that crap. Right? So, I mean, <laughs> everybody makes mistakes. Every president is make, ma- makes mistakes. The deck was stacked against him, though. I mean, from the beginning. From the beginning. And I still go back to his inauguration speech that I never, get, never would get past. I never seen somebody call out his all the people that was... He, Caesar, man. <laughs> Says straight up Caesar. Like, you got the whole Senate behind you waiting to pull out their knives to kill you. You know? Yeah, I mean, y'all. Well, and that's why I think it's important to understand when you when you see the machine and you see how it moves and what it does, how it controls people, like you can't unsee it. And that's why you have to try to figure out how to how to beat it. Hutch talked about Maui earlier. So there's a lot of really weird reporting about how the fire started. There's a thousand dead or missing kids. They started school back up 
one out of four kids ain't there. Wow. There is zero media coverage of it other than covering wow. Biden there. There's a ton of independent journalists on the ground. They're actually getting like stalked and intimidated by, by people. people. And <clears throat> and there's just a ton of anomalies. There, there's a story there that we don't know. The videos of the fires are weird. Every it's just and the outcome's going to be rich people are going to buy all this land from yep. the residents. And it was only the residents' houses that burned. So draw whatever conclusion you want. But when you see, like, why is that not being covered? Why, why doesn't CNN have camera crews on the ground interviewing 100 people? Why is any of this well, happening? Let, and listen to this. When you when those, those fires were, some say, 2,000 degrees. Right. Between 1,400 degrees and 1,600 degrees, the human body incinerates. Right. They said there was 110 people missing. They took these remains, which were just piles of bones and ash, and they shoveled them into body bags. And they ran out after 450 body bags. Yep. What, 100 missing? Even wow. if you look at the, the pictures of the cars, here you have these wide streets with small single-story buildings on the sides, no trees, no anything. And I mean, it's like a bomb went off in there. Like every car is burnt to a crisp, I, like high temperature fires and stuff. And, you know, I'm not that I could I understand know, but... because it was the wind. And that's right. how you increase temperature on fire is with wind. Right. But so, it's still crazy that those things went is. up like that. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, um, what a spicy episode. <laughs> I was going to ask him something, but you kind of did. I was going to ask him, um, name one person you like. Well, that was what I was trying to get to, because there's got to be somebody up there that's not a complete total. <laughs> like nobody, <laughs> really, oh, all of them, Lottie, yeah. Dottie, everybody. Get rid of all of them. I but, don't know but, if I disagree with him, but well, I mean, you know, we've said on the show, get look, shut it's the whole nice, thing down. but is it is it doable? Is the question you got to ask yourself? That's right. the thing. That's the thing. That's the thing. It should be because should honestly, be. they they don't make money up there. They steal our money. They don't make money. You know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> you know, it's like, well, you um, it's government funded. No, 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 it's people funded. The government don't fund anything. Right. They take our money and put it toward it, but. They don't make money. They don't make money. Well, and it was interesting. I was I was having this conversation with my future stepson, and, and it was like, how much of the government <laughs> do you want gone? And I'm like, 75% of it. Let's just start there. Like, yeah. that, that would probably be a, a good level. And he's like, well, how would anything happen? It's like, just looking at a rough number, that's probably about right. I'm, you know, I, 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 am, I am glad that he brought up the guy – the God like um, thing that uh, that our people have like rushed into because instead of building people up from the ground, they're trying to um, get all these uh, people. The, I call them Trumper jumpers. I, I've always called them Trumper jumpers because they because they use Trump's name to get ahead. They use a whole lot of his wording and stuff, and and then you and. And then the people on social media, oh, they like Trump. They must be good. Let's follow. And and it's like, oh man, y'all are. I mean, it's the Pied Piper effect. You know, he's he, he blowing his horn, and y'all are going down, following everything. You know, it, it's a good old jazz session going on, and y'all following it. But he ain't doing nothing. They ain't doing nothing. They just sitting behind a mic. Yeah. And, uh, uh, yes, and then Donald, Donald Trump. Um, he got attacked. And um, um, War. we should we should uh help defend Donald Trump. Numbers keep going up. Numbers keep going up. Um, sir, can you talk about conservative conservatism? No, we're talking about Donald Trump. Uh, what ticket is the doctor? Run? He independent. said independent. Independent. He said he said independent. Uh, <laughs> I don't before, think he'll win. I'm just going out on a limb. <laughs> Okay. He really, he really doesn't like Roger Strami, does he? Um, that Brahmin. <laughs> he really doesn't like Roger Strami. He doesn't like anybody. Yeah, yeah he, I was going to say, he didn't like anybody. Really Although, ironically, really the person he had the least, least critical feedback for was Joe Biden. 
I'm like, what do you think about Joe Biden? He's an idiot. Moving on. Let me go tell you about Donald Trump and Ivanka. And- that's he's almost not that, he's not in that race right now. Well, you're right, right. I mean, that's almost that's almost what we do on the show. We're like, listen, we're pushing Democrats over to the side. Yeah. We, we already know where they are. But he brought we, up we, RFK like three times. He got a problem with him. Vaccine. Yeah, yeah, he does. He does. I'm oh just well, saying. it's because of Elon giving uh right. based on the faces thing the other night. Uh he was like, he's getting all this stuff, he's getting all this and, and all this stuff. And what about the other people that come and tell the truth? You know, he you know, he he's calling out individuals that are kissing uh um, he has a flamethrower taking it to everybody. Yeah. Burn it all oh, down. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Yeah, he's going to be around for a little bit. Uh, we're not going to watch it. Well, we don't plan on watching it anyway. But, um, I'm watching. Uh, oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. Jay, Jason is watching. Um, Rare Voice Media is going to be able to watch something on Rare Voice Media Network. They'll be having um, some hosts join, and uh, they're going to be talking with them about the debate tonight stuff so you can check them out on redvoicemedia.com jason give me some last thoughts all right i'll make it quick uh, folks thanks for tuning in make sure to give us a like comment and share and here's a little feedback for watching the debate and then the trump thing tomorrow you are watching pro wrestling many of you are still living in the time where you think pro wrestling is real and you really think hulk hogan and the iron Sheik hate each other uh it's all a show folks so understand that when you watch tonight's debates over to you hutch there you go. The big problem with the new John Fetterman is he looks nothing like the old John Fetterman. <laughs> what did they do with the real John Fetterman? Did they kill him? That's not John Fetterman. That's not John Fetterman. <laughs> he went Wait to the same guy that uh, Joe Biden went to. Wait a minute. Uh, you know what? I've been seeing headlines, but I I haven't seen the new the the new John Fetterman. So it's on his Twitter um, timeline. It's not even the same John Fetterman. It's not the same dude. I want to know what happened to the real one. Does he have a mustache? Now he does. That new guy. Yeah, but <laughs> look, look, look at the his nose his and his skinny. head and his, his yeah. extra skinny. Wayne will retweet like that on Check out Wayne's Twitter timeline. He looks like that dude on Breaking Bad or something or one of them. Yeah, he does. He does. As a matter of fact, that's the picture I'm looking at. They got him right beside the Breaking Bad dude. Yeah, that's that ain't Fetterman. <laughs> so the question remains: Where is Fetterman? Where is I'm Fetterman? waiting to Fetterman see if the new do. guy shows up to the Senate when they're back in session, or if this, this if it's world, the old man, Fetterman. This, freak, this world we're living in, man, we're running out of time. It's all behind a pro wrestling scenes. show, folks. Behind the scenes, where Rare Voice Media starts now.